Hi, how are you doing today? Very good. How are you? Yes, very good. Thank you very much. Um, thank you so much for sharing your incredible film. It's still on my mind long after watching it. Um, so congratulations on such an incredible project. Yeah, thanks. No, it was uh, quite an ordeal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This um has been decades in the matic making. How does it feel to be finally showing your project and your your world to the world? Well, it. it... Uh, exceeded my wildest e expectations, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I had showed it to a few, you know, friends uh, who were very, very encouraging, but, you know, everybody said the same thing. This is not a movie for everyone. And, um, and so I, j I didn't know, you know, at all. And I got really depressed after the first two film festivals that I entered one Berlin and something else. I got rejected and it was like all right this is uh, you know kind of what I expected and then when it premiered in Locarno everything just it just took off from there and you know got to the point where it's showing theatrically worldwide and it's opening in Japan pretty soon and they just I was just on the internet today looking at stuff and they were they're doing all this swag and today they you know they're doing like sunglasses and hats and whatnot and today it was um mushroom hot sauce mad god <laughs> mushroom hot sauce <laughs> that sounds amazing I need to need to get my hand on mushroom mad god <laughs> hot sauce <laughs> um I'm really interested in because it's been so long in the making, um, and, and it's such a vivid and visual piece. It's honestly astonishing. Um, what was the genesis for this project, and how has it evolved over the times that you began it to to now? Um, well, it was a, literally a vision, you know, in in um, religious sense of, of the word. You know, I just saw it all at once, um, which is really hard to explain but you you get a, a vision of a complete thing but you know what it ultimately turned out to be was very much a joseph campbell hero's journey you know because you start on your journey with an objective and uh but you don't know, you may not exactly know what it is, but you have some kind of a feeling or to find it, you go down a path that leads to a path that leads to a talking crow that, you know, you follow into a castle that you, blah, blah, blah. and it you know, ends up being, you know, the hero, you know, dies and then is reborn. And that, that literally is what happened. I mean, I God, you know, I mean, I, at the end, I totally cracked up. And then, you know, at the end of it, I lost all interest in making things with my hands. And now I just write all the time. And it was, it was literally a rebirth, you know. Amazing. And that really comes through with, with your film as well. That kind of like hopeful rebirth at the end of it. With yeah. That yeah. Bright color. Yeah. No, it was that was really important. You know, that that, you know, the creation of the well, this is the creation of the universe <laughs> and then evolution of the destruction of, you know, great cities and whatnot, but then it resolves itself into Eisenstein, you know, time, you know, just being lost in, you know, uh, you know, a uh, uh, crazy a temporality, you know, that is was you know the best way I could come close to you know expressing a uh like a place universe that had a totally different kind of um uh structure to it than um what we're used to and of course i had to you know do it with things that we're used to like time by speeding things up and slowing things down and running them forward and running them backwards so it's pretty conventional and then it was like it got to the point where it was like towards the end of the movie is like you know i gotta figure out how to end this thing 
And um, so what I would do a lot, I, I would channel different artists and, you know, I would go, you know, like, I wonder what this or that person would do. And I knew for the overall tone, you know, I wanted something that was, you know, muscular, like, like Beethoven and like, right, you know, really solid and in your face. But then for the ending, I channeled Groucho Marx. And it was like, what, what would Groucho do? And it was like, oh, the cuckoo clock. You know, it resolves everything, you know, with the, the whole time, you know, because time is, a, you know, is, is an element of, of the thing that shows up over and over and over again. And the whole thing was cuckoo anyhow. And, and then it was very important for me to have like a, you know, a kind of a come down time for the audience and just have black with this yodeling in it, this very quiet, distant, beautiful yodeling and, and resolving in, you know, the, the final shot silent uh, of uh, Alex Cox watching the diving bell go down, you know, one more time. And then, you know, uh, like a lot of things, like my dad, I was an artist and showed me a book on Hieronymus Bosch when I was a kid. I was like, oh, one day I want to make a movie like Hieronymus Bosch. And then I, you know, years later, I saw uh, Terrence Malick's Badlands when it, when it was first released. And the music that he used, it was a Carl Orff piece, music for xylophones. And I was like, God, ah, that's great. You know what? If I ever make a movie, I'm going to use that for my credits. And so I did. And I found that and bought the rights to it. And it, it was just, you know, having that something, you know, quiet and then, you know, beautiful and dynamic at the end is really, was really kind of an, you know, counterintuitive thing that was, that was intentional on my part to, to just put a little bit of air between the in insanity of, of the the movie and re-entering, you know, normality. <laughs> it's perfect. It's like it's like going on a on a on a drug trip. I, I sort of guess you get like that kind of that calm towards the end when you're coming back down to earth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And a lot of people have, have, have mentioned and I I found that um somewhat there are some anti war themes and allegories um coming through and it feels very much like like a, a, a depiction of of the horrors of, of the war in the manic world is, is that what your aim was yeah well i mean of course it has an overall vibe of a you know post-industrial you know jungle horror show you know so uh you know and it's it's the zeitgeist thing definitely i mean I keep up on the news, you know, and, and there's no way that you can't, you know, uh, ignore that, you know, no matter what you do. And I, I didn't intentionally try and do anything like that. But once you start working, you just, you know, you reflect on the world you work in and um, that's what you get. Absolutely. Because the scene that sticks out with me the most, which I feel is a very big indictment of audiences today is the audience who are watching that horrific surgery scene and laughing um and, and could that be like a, a kind of comment on on how we view horror and like the horrors we see through social media and the news every day as well and we're becoming somewhat indifferent to it well you know again you know i've channeled um laurel and hardy for that and um they did i forget what the the title of the movie is but Billy Gilbert is moving and he has a gout foot and Stan and Ollie are moving the uh, furniture out of his house into their moving truck. And Billy Gilbert's, you know, sitting on the, the runner on the side of the car and Stan steps on his gout foot and he goes, oh, and people laugh, ha, ha, ha. And that happens again and again and again. And it reaches this point where, you know, it's not funny at all until they keep doing it. And then it turns into something completely different. You know, it, it, the, the, the joke 
transforms itself by you know its repetition and and paul did the same thing in robocop with the um mr kinney getting blown apart and of course it was it was um the uh, mpaa made him fix it but you know what what he did with mr kinney you know in in his cut was he just had the guns going on for fucking ever and uh and and you know that that turns the 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 intention of the scene amazing because it reminded me it, it's funny you bring up Lauren Hart because it reminded me of another film uh, it's called Sign of the Cross by Cecil B. DeMille and he, he's got a wonderful scene with audiences watching a horror and just being really indifferent to it and it's fascinating that 90 years later we're still saying this of audiences God, I don't know if I have seen that one you know but I don't even know what you know there's a lot of stuff in that God that I channeled that I'd go back and look at later and go like, oh, you know, that was Murnau, you know, or that was, you know, Metropolis. Uh, you know, it was like, oh, that's, that's, you know, what that was clearly the inspiration, you know. Yeah, amazing. Um, and I really love that you did this stop motion because uh, there was a time where people didn't think stop motion was going to make it, but it's, it's becoming having a nice little resurgence again. You know, you've got Del Toro's Pinocchio and you've got uh, Selix, Wendell and Wilde, and now you've got your beautiful mad God. Like how, how do you feel that the art craft is, is still getting an extra life? Yeah. Well, I think, uh, you know, um, you know, computer graphics have, have just kind of reached the saturation point, you know, and uh <laughs> Uh, on some level it's kind of like drinking from the fire hose you know and that that um images created by zeros and one by default don't have that feeling of being handcrafted mm. you know um and i think to some degree you know i mean it's you know uh nostalgic for an older audience and you know has its own distance and its own reality that you know younger audiences you know are drawn into as well absolutely and even the films that you've worked on for me cgi can't compare to the puppets in jurassic park or the visual effects in star wars uh and the thing you know that that kind of stuff that that feels like you said handcrafted yeah and i i really think that the the success in in terms of the visuals and the dynamics of jurassic park and starship troopers were really the result of those of us that really came out of doing practical filmmaking you know mm -hmm. we knew what the stuff should look like um as opposed to oh i wonder how i could make this look cool in a computer who's like you know no, we got to do this we got to do that that doesn't look right it doesn't feel doesn't have the scale doesn't have the water weight doesn't have the blah 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 you know just like what you do normally if you're working with practical stuff but the early computer graphics guys didn't have any experience with that or you know with how to frame a show in in you know pre-production production and post-production and all that so you know we, we were definitely a carryover from the past and since then you know there are you know a lot of um you know extremely talented computer graphics artists but uh, you know it's a form that you know is really contingent upon the you know quality of the narrative you know and if it's if it's just eye candy you know at, at the end of the day you know it's like a michael bay movie you just feel like you're drinking from the fire hose and you just want it to you know go away <laughs> absolutely um and you just mentioned uh before and i, I was reading a bit about your relationship with uh, paul verhoeven and i was wondering how that has helped and informed your work over the years well paul was really a mentor for me you know um because i i really enjoyed our association because you know um George and Stephen, you know, were very, um, you know, they they had to be, um, you know, uh, audience friendly for their shows. As a result of they they needed to create their own commercial reality 
uh, so they, they weren't beholden to the studios. And so they could create their own world, which means you have to do entertainment that's popular. And Paul operates as an artist um, in, in that, you know, he doesn't, he makes his movies for himself, you know, and the consequences are, yeah, he hopes he makes money. But, you know, how many of them tanked at the box office and then like 10 years later, like these classic movies, you know, and that that's certainly, you know, not at all uncommon for an artist. Absolutely. I mean, even his stuff now, Benedetta and Al, I find that. Oh, God. Yeah, I was like, you know, my my wife was in the other room reading and I was I was watching it, you know, uh, and uh, she she heard me going, oh, my God, I know. And then like two seconds later, you know, I'd be laughing hysterically. <laughs> it's <was laughs> like, you know, that's Paul. You know, it's his magic. <laughs> absolutely um and uh what i love about mad god is, is some of the the some of the sequences they're hor some of them are horrific like but beautiful in their own right and there's many who find catharsis with creating horror has has mad mad god been a kind of cathartic journey for you creating these like you know, images of your mind and putting them onto the screen cathartic in that um I I am bipolar, you know, and I'm actually I'm unipolar. I don't get depressed unless there's something to get depressed about, but I'm very manic. And so uh you know before, and I self-diagnosed myself when I, uh, working on Mad God. And um you know that's always been you know, my my superpower that I wasn't even aware of all my life, you know, that I I would keep and it's still to this day, you know, I I just need to keep doing something all the time to keep myself occupied. And then, the you know, that's how I, I channel my, you know, craziness. And, um, you know, until I, I exhaust myself, <laughs> then I just have to sit down and watch television. Amazing. Well, uh, thank you so much for speaking with me today and sharing your masterpiece of mad god to the world um i hope you enjoy the rest of your day okay thanks a lot bye, bye. ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey, you guys. is yeah. that from the goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice hey you